has has been lenient to the government. The insensitivity on the part of the government is becoming irritating. Since 2017, Ekufuado and Baume have introduced 31 new taxes, including nuisance taxes like Bola tax, COVID-19 tax, COVID-19 tax on NHIL, and now elect, um, tax on electricity. After they promised Ghanaians that they were moving us from taxation to production, they developed an appetite for taxing Ghanaians with impunity. All right, I've got more messages coming in. I'll try to read some of them as we go. But uh, I think this is a good time to move on to our second topic um, this morning. So prominent South African politician Julius Malema has said that corruption is endangering our democracy here in Ghana. This event where he spoke at was organized by the Arise Ghana movement. The convener is here with us. Bernard, how was your event? It was solid. It was solid. It was solid. All Apart right. from the initial hitches of wanting to prevent Comrade Malema from landing uh, for his flight to get into Ghana. For those who um, have not seen any excerpts from the program yesterday, I'd like us to just um, take a look at a, sh a short excerpt and then, Bernard, you, you'd, you'd let us know how it went. The democracy of Ghana is threatened by corruption. A corruption that made sure that Ghana does not pay its international debt. As a result, today, Ghana is unable to self-determine because everything else is dictated to Ghana by IMF and the World Bank because the current leadership failed to honor their obligation. All right, I'd like us to speak about this part of the, the, his, his speech. Of evidently, Malema came, yes. and he decided to do what we call generational mix. He paid Kessy call on President Mahama. We moved to President Kufo to pay Kessy call on him. And he did what every African will do by going to the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, where he laid a reef on behalf of the members of the economic fighters, freedom fighters of South Africa and also signed a book of condolence at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. After all this, we came back. In fact, just to tell you that from the airport, we didn't go anywhere. We didn't take him to a place to relax or to eat. He started his work. And from the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, we came to a, an auditorium full of people of all walks of life who were determined to listen to him. And so some ones of us who were supposed to even deliver written speeches, we had to cut it short because the expectation was for Malema to speak. So in the course of his speech, he made a number of issues. One, he condemned any African leader whose nation has passed through colonialism or apartheid that will side with the people of Israel against the struggling people and oppressed people of Palestine. And he condemned President Akufado for that statement he made that Ghana sides with Ukraine and um, uh, 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 Israel. And that no circumstance should anybody who has suffered the difficulties of what colonialism represents would want to sit with Israel on a table when the people of Israel are doing what the Europeans did to us to the Palestinian people. The second important thing that he mentioned was that there should not be any opportunity <coughs> for anybody to die through an election. And that elections should provide a solid background for people to determine and to make their choices. And that it is only within the black race that we see that heads of states who are supposed to exit after their expiration of office would want to invite the military and sometimes extend their stay. Obviously, this was not a reference to Ghana, but it was in reference to many people like Alassane Ouattara of Ivory Coast that President Akufuado is very happy hobnobbing with. It's a reference to people like Fonya Singbe of Togo that President Akufuado and Kandapa are happy hobnobbing with. It's reference to people that President used to hobnob with in, in, in uh, Alpha Conde. And so he was making a message, people like Yuwari Museveni. This was the message that he delivered, not only 
to the people of uh, Ghana. Then the other important thing that he said, it was about media, that despite whatever the media will do, no politician should want to mold the media the way we are doing it in Ghana. You understand? Your, one of your media houses, right, your outlet, is in court trying to clear because they are speaking the way that the government doesn't like and everything is being done to undermine. Okay, that's me and uh, others giving him a smoke. This is a, a, a good smoke coming from the Upper West Region mm. that we handed over to him. So he spoke extensively. Then he came to what corruption has done and what corruption is doing. And he indicated that, look, when you have corruption, it eats away from the people. It takes what belongs to the people away from them. Consequently, it imposes hardship. And any time there is hunger as a result of the greed that is perpetrated by acts of corruption, that anger will translate into a disturbance of the democracy. Because they say an angry man is a, a hungry man is an angry man. So when that happens, you will not be able to contain the effects of the anger of the people on our democracy. And I have said time without number that look, anytime there is food shortage, then you know that democracy is at risk. And so corruption has eaten away everything. Look, the scandals that we have witnessed under governments in this country are so monumental, but not in the manner that we are witnessing under uh, Kenoforata and Akufado, where it is like, it's daylight TV. Daylight TV. Look, Kenoforata goes to take money as, as debt for Ghana and benefits from it. Kenoforata, when people are suffering from COVID, they say they are going to give line, line, lifeline what, workers insurance. They take money. Ken Oforata hands it over to Enterprise Insurance in excess of 10 million. So you take Enterprise Insurance, cal capture it as uh, insurance for people who are COVID threatened. At the end of the day, no insurance certificate whatsoever is issued. These are not just corruption. These are thieves who just take our money and just go and put it in their personal pockets. Corruption has led to the collapse of many banks. When Ken Oforata and Co. are collapsing our banks, Ken Oforata has sufficient money to go and create cap, uh, uh, banks in, in, in the Gambia, go and create banks in Liberia and other places. So you collapse banks in Ghana, lead young people out of employment, and you are creating banks. That is what corruption can do. Ben, and so, I, Malema, I understand that you're passionate about what you're saying, but I don't think you should use words like thieves. Okay, they are stealers. When people steal, what do you call them? Because it is not like we don't know. These are persons that have stolen. If they take your money and say we are going to give insurance and no insurance certificate has been issued, what do you call that, that person? All right, well, we, we... You will not call that person a thief. We, we, we here at TV3 would dissociate ourselves you from, can, from you that can, expression. You can, you can. You That's can even take the table to dissociate itself from it. But All I'm right. saying that somebody who has taken your money, going to give to the company, is not called a thief. What All is right. the person called? You can continue to make your point. So, eh, come look, to that when we point. sit down and we are angry and we are speaking, we are speaking because we want to protect the sanctity of our democracy. We want to ensure that there is no opportunity to undermine peaceful transitions. And those who are in the helm of affairs by their actions and their pronouncements are doing everything to undermine that peaceful process. That is our worry. And that right. is what Mal Malema said yesterday, that look, the levels of corruption by this government is said that Ghana's democracy it's is at, as a crossroad. Did you listen to Malema yesterday? I did. All right. What do you make of his, his pronouncements, especially on corruption? Well, I mean, if you look at all of this, a lot has happened in time past as far as corruption is concerned, which has taken international dimensions. And I'm sure probably that's where Malema is coming from. But to look at the persona of Malema and his origin, South Africa. South Africa is a bastion of uh, political activism. 
massive political activism. And if you look at the rise of Malema from his ANC Youth League days to being a third force in the South African parliament with his EFF, which he leads, I think that uh, he's become a voice that, or would I say a voice of reason within the African, just not the African political space, because I have watched him at the Oxford Union debate, or, you know, pontificate his view. I have listened to him at Chatham House, right? So what it means is that when you're having these institutions gravitate towards him, it tells you that he has something to offer in terms of democratic engagement and political engagement. So if Malema has arrived in Ghana in 2024, and his catchphrase or team, it's corruption, what it means is that he is listening to most of the issues that are happening, uh, at least among which are the Cecilia Dapa case, where you're talking about a very malnourished ministry, which is a ministry of uh, sanitation, that are even struggling to dredge uh, gutters and the likes of that. And you have a certain minister touching troves of money home that has created a money bank in one of the rooms. right? So for me, all of this happening and the kind of confidence and zeal she still had to pursue it when helps at home stole not just a fraction, a minute and insignificant amount, deciding to take them to court and pursue them tells you the height and smell of corruption. The matter is still in court. Under this government. It is. is. Still, I'm not drawing a conclusion. So, what I'm just saying is, so yeah. So, and even under this, yeah, under this very case as well, we've seen the frustrations that have been meted out to a special prosecutor. Mm. Never in the history of any country would you clad a special prosecutor. When you say special prosecutor, it means you've given them different, effective, and potent constitutional powers. Right, to act in ways that ordinary prosecutors would not do. But he came helplessly before the nation, right, putting himself, even he couldn't speak directly to the issues that affect him. And you know, in our folk laws, when you have a problem that you can't speak or you have a certain fear or phobia for, you use proverbs. Mm -hmm. He was speaking in proverbial terms, in near tears, because of what? The issues that he's been faced with, and that is corruption. PDS, what is it? SML. And all of these issues that are emanating are of international uh, quantum. So if Malema tend to sum all of these up, he'll be concerned that, yes, indeed, corruption sure has a way. But all in right. all of this, uh, as I, I know Afoko would say, yes, Dr. He, Balmier he is has, saying good, final good morning. But I want he him to also tell word. us what Dr. Balmier is doing about right. the series of these corrupt issues right. that has emerged you know, as, the under his word. leadership. Well, I'm most grateful, Professor Khalid yeah. Sharif for your take on this and your bite. We were happy when uh, we saw, they call him comrade Julius Malema coming. <laughs> he's a patriot of the African soil. So he's a patriot. He loved the prosperity of Africa and he spoke as it is. He made two statements, profound statements. One is on corruption. Then two is on retirement of ex-presidents and enjoying their pensions whilst allowing the young ones to take over. Based on that, you can see that he visited. He says the ex-president should enjoy their pension and accept courtesy calls while the state provide them with security and their pensions and enjoy whatever lagis of power whilst enjoying their pensions and give way to the young ones. It was a reprimand to the ex-president John Ramani Mahama. Mm -hmm. His commentary, <laughs> his narratives. He spoke directly was to it? him, impliedly, yeah. yes. Because in Ghana now, as we speak, President Kufuo is enjoying the statesman as former president, accepting Ketsi calls as uh, Comrade Julius Malema admonished us to do, admonished uh, former heads of states to do. He visited him. He paid a Ketsi call on him. He accepted him. They had a hearty conversations. He gave them a series of advices and the likes. This is what Julius Malema is telling. They went to the ex-president, John Ramani Mahama, and he's lazing his boots to contest and bombarding, saying all sorts of stories. Some of them, I, I just, because of my training, I can't use certain words on your platform. But some of the st statements that he puts out turns out to be false. He mentioned that uh, cement is being sold on the Ghanaian market at 800 cities. He was corrected on the platform. He mentioned that um, is it electricity bills are in increased, what, what, what. He was corrected on the platform. Did I say that? And a whole lot of, you see that the man is confused because he's not enjoying his statesmanship in those regards. He said they should give way to the young ones. Comparing the age of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the president of the Republic of Ghana, come to uh, January 7, 2025, and that of 
His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, it clearly tells you the position of Julius Malima, who is rooting for youthful African leaders, that President Mahama should stay home and give way to President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to lead the good people of Ghana because he's associated with credible policies of the republic. As far as the governance and leadership of our country is concerned. You again, have to wrap up. again, on corruption, he did not mince words mm -hmm. that corruption is destroying the fabric of our country, the democracy of our country, rightly said so. That is why President Anadan Kufuaro satisfied the uh, uh, campaign promise by establishing the office of the special prosecutor with an act of parliament, Act 959. God save you. A whole ombudsman <laughs> taxed with the responsibility to investigate and prosecute corruption and corruption-related offenses. How's that going? A former president who was associated with the Airbus scandal, a former president that the former special prosecutor, Martin Alamisi Ben Kaiser Amidu, told the good people of Ghana now, the that Airbus comment the former president, was exonerated John, uh, John Evans Atameos, I think he should speak John Atameos, constituted a committee to investigate him as vice president. How, how, so, did, that how did that come up? Yes, please, how did please, that please, 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 please. He mentioned, he mentioned the case in court. Cecilia Dabba. Oh, Bernard, you are chief. Bernard, please, I have little time. Bernard, Bernard, please. Bernard, please. Bernard, so with the Majero scandal, with the Mesue Kanazure, the Ivorian, the Bokinabe contractor, who gave a donation of a Ford expedition for the construction of the Eastern Corridor Road. You see, all Enoch. this come to play that. Enoch. Julius Malima did not miss worse as far as epitomizing the issue of corruption and raising the, the ban of corruption so higher in his statement. No, no. What happened yeah. to the fund? No, is talking no. About no. Oh, please, please, please. please. Oh, unfortunately, please. that's all, all time will allow. He was brought in. in. Yes. He was pointed by the NDC. And now, so and and so now he end. came to tell them in their face. The weakness is their flaws. Bernard, please allow him to speak. And what they ought not to do. Okay, so I'm told that your audio is totally off and we can't hear you anymore. But thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming in. I've been speaking to Bernard Mona. I've been speaking to Prof. Sharif Kali. I beg your pardon, Khalid, Khalid. Yeah. Sharif Khalid, and also yeah, to Enoch Ifoakwa, without the K. You, you so miss, Ali, you seem to miss Bella. So I'm not You're pronouncing it well. To... Ali. Oh, no. oh. It's okay. The, Bella is my sister. We are from the same town. Your, your, your <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, um, thank you for sending in your messages. I read those that I heard. Still to come, we're going to be talking to Article 1 in entertainment. But if you're looking to buy a house or you're looking to sell your house, Rented Ghana has so many options available to you when it comes to houses to choose from. You, we have houses for sale available across the country. They come at very reasonable prices. Um, paperwork concerning all the houses have been properly screened before sales are done to you. So you don't have to worry about being duped or any problems that come with the sale of house. Um, there's absolutely no room for scams here at Rented Ghana. We have different types of houses ranging from smart houses to furnished apartments or even uncompleted houses if that's what you want. You don't have to pay anything expensive for any of these buildings. You can trust Rented. Call Rented on 055-261-8521 or 0530-42521 or 53 044-7312. Find your next home with Rented Ghana. Stay tuned. You're